Hello everyone, welcome back. You are watching the Data Labs. My name is Dilip. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to develop a student registration form with image control in Excel and VVA. To make this tutorial uh, simple and easy, we will utilize the same Excel file for database as well as a data entry form. To store the student's image, we will dynamically create a folder for the images at the same location where uh, we will save our excel file and create a copy of selected image in this folder and store the path of the selected image in database worksheet so uh, this tutorial has a lot to uh, learn and a lot to do i would request you to watch uh, this tutorial till end so that you can't miss any code or logic after watching this uh, tutorial you will be able to develop a complex form as per your requirement i have provided the link of excel file in description box uh, please follow the link and download the excel file so that you can practice along with this tutorial so let's uh, move uh, to the folder where we will create this data entry form and understand the support files which uh, we will be utilizing so this is the support files let's open the support files and here you can see that uh, there are three different objects uh, available one is you know uh, calendar.gif this is icon which we will utilize to uh, launch the calendar control in our form and the second one is custom calendar control which has been uh, developed in a visual basic application and that is fully compatible with any version of excel so you can use it and the third one is the regular expression pattern uh, to validate the structure of email id provided by the user in data entry form okay so this is uh, these are the basic uh, details which we will utilize you can download the support files from the same link which has been provided in the uh, description box let's open the excel application and create a create a blank workbook Let's click on a blank workbook and press Ctrl S to save this file. So here we need to save the file at the same location where we have kept support file. So let's move to the folder, copy the path, let's copy this path press ctrl c go back press the path over here save and let's uh, give the name as a student's registration form okay and make sure uh, you have selected uh, the type as dot xlsm click on save now this file has been saved let's add three worksheet over here so one worksheet is already available let's click on this plus icon the second one and this is the third one okay let's move to first worksheet and uh, change the name from sheet one to home H O M E. okay press ctrl s to save the changes now we need to add a launch uh, form button over here so let's uh, design this home uh, sheet okay and uh, select the border so this is outline okay and click on okay so now we can see that uh, the home worksheet is ready press ctrl s to save the changes 
let's move to the next worksheet that is sheet 2 let's change the name from sheet 2 to database just double click on that and database okay so this is the database worksheet which we will utilize to transfer the data from form to this data uh, database worksheet right uh, let's add the column header so the first column would be serial number and then student students name father's name date of birth gender course mobile number email id address picture submitted by submitted on so these are the columns which are required uh, for database worksheet let's expand the column header okay so let's uh, format the header okay so let's uh, move to worksheet 3 uh, and change the name to support okay and uh, let's create a column header that would be courses and mention the course that is uh, 10th 10 plus 2 so bachelor's bachelor degree master and phd so this these are the sample course which uh, we are utilizing over here you can mention your course and uh, we are adding support worksheet because we will make uh, the course drop down totally dynamic so it means in future suppose you need to add some course then you do not need to go to the code window and add some certain line line of course you just need to come to the support worksheet and just update make the changes in uh, this course column if you delete any of the course from here uh, it will be automatically uh, you know, uh, updated in uh, course combo box as well as if you add any of the course that will be automatically added over there okay now all the worksheets are ready let's move to the visual basic application window to uh, move to the visual basic application window you just need to click on developer tab and under code group just click on visual basic click on maximize so here you can see that you are on uh, visual basic application window so first of all let's uh, change the name of each and every worksheet in properties window so let's select the form uh, the home worksheet and change the name from sheet 1 to sh home okay select the name of uh, the sheet 2 that is database so sh database okay and the third one that is sheet 3 so that's sh support okay so we have changed the name of sheet 1 sheet 2 and sheet 3 and we will utilize this name in our coding okay uh, so let's add a user form so just click on insert and click on user form so this is the user form which we will be utilizing uh, to transfer the data from this form to database so let's uh, design the user form so just select this user form and go to the properties window that is uh, this is available here so let's expand this user properties window a little bit more okay now you can see that uh, see all those details so let's uh, change the name 
so the name the name would be frm data entry frm okay and the back color should be white so let's uh, change the back color so this one white color okay and the caption should be here you can see that the captions so that would be st students registration form okay let's expand it okay so this is a student's registration form let's change the height and width so height would be 483 maybe 484 and width should be 573 okay let's run this form and see the size so this size is perfectly uh, appearing on our screen let's close this form press ctrl s to save the changes now we need to insert all those controls and you know uh, the frame so we will uh, divide our form in two sections one will be for data entry and one will be for database so for that we need to insert frame so let's insert a frame so click on frame this is the frame okay and click and draw a frame okay and let's change the name so name would be frame one okay and the back color would be uh, again uh, let's change the back color to white so simple white and border color so let's border style would be single and the border color should be go to maybe this one border color okay uh, let's change the height and width so height would be let's select this frame and the height would be 252 and width would be 534 so 534 okay let's uh, make it center so let's move a little bit right side uh, let's uh, change the caption so select like this frame and go to up caption would be enter details and the font color so font should be it's a tahoma and a regular and the size should be 12 so let's select this 12 click on ok and the color would be the same color which we are utilizing so maybe this one so the first frame is done and now we need to insert all those controls like uh, the input field so let's uh, quickly insert all those required labels so we need uh, eight labels so let's st start adding all those labels first so So first of all let's uh, arrange all these labels so let's move this label a little bit upside okay select all those levels go to format align left and again format and the vertical spacing and that would be equal okay let's select this label again and increase the width okay press ctrl s to save this let's uh, change the caption for each and every label so the label one the caption would be students name and the second would be father's name third is date of birth okay and the fourth is gender and the fifth one is course applied then mobile number okay and 
email id okay press control s to save this form so let's add the input controls for each and every uh, level against each and every level so first of all the student name uh, that would be text box draw the text box over here okay and again uh, the text box for father name uh, so let's select this father name for text box and for date of birth we need a text box as well so again text box for gender we need uh, two option buttons so this is option one and again option two okay and course applied we need a combo box right and for mobile number and email id we need text box so let's add two text box so this is for mobile number and again this is for email id okay now we need a image control for image so let's insert image control and that is available here click over here draw an image control over here okay let's move a little bit yeah and let's okay and let's add a command button to upload the image so just click on command button let's add this and we need one more text box to uh, store the path of image so let's click on this text box and insert it uh, let's reduce the size and then place this over here okay and now we need a uh, one label that is for address so we will place address over here so let's this is for address and select the caption uh, change the caption that would be address and we need let's move this little bit upper side right and let's insert a text box so just insert a text box over here let's move this okay okay and uh, let's insert two uh, command button one is for submit and one is for reset so let's uh, this is for submit okay and press control c control v and that will be for reset okay so we have inserted all those uh, required controls uh, we need to add uh, the icon for date of birth so first of all we will make uh, the changes of changing properties and then we will add a uh, icon for that okay so let's add one more text box that would be hidden like uh, we will make this hidden as well as one more text box to contain the row so let's click over here text box and place it so now we are done with each and every control this is required so let's uh, change the properties of each and every input controls and format all those controls so it will look beautiful okay so let's start with uh, the student the text box first and change the name that the name would be txt student name okay and the back color would be again uh, back color would be white and the border style that would be single and the border color should be the same color which we are utilizing and the height would be 20 and the width should be 192 okay and the tab order should be 1 Okay, select the father's name and change the cap name from text to to txt father name and again the border style that should be single back color that would be white and border color the same pattern which we are using okay and the height would be 20 
and width should be 192. Select the date of birth again, change the name that would be txt dob water style single border color this one back color white and height should be 20 and width should be 192 okay i think we need to make uh, this form a little bit wider so that each and every control will get placed perfectly so let's increase the size of this frame let's move this to right side now it, it's looking good okay let's Okay, great. Let's uh, change the caption, uh, like uh, change the properties for gender, like option one and option two. So let's uh, let it be OP, OPT female, and the caption should be female, and that would be OPT male. And the caption should be male okay course applied for so let's change the name so that would be cmb course and the border should be again the single and the border color would be the same color which we are utilizing for others and back color would be white and the height should be 20 and the width should be 192 okay let's uh, select the, the text box for mobile number so name would be txt mobile and back color would be white single and border would be the same color okay height should be 20 and width should be 192 okay let's select the text box for email id change the name from text box 5 to txt email again border should be single border color would be same color and back color would be white height should be 20 and the width should be 192 okay now we need to change the name of this uh, text box that is hidden so let's txt row number okay and so visible is equal to false let's uh, change the properties for image controls so select this and go to the properties window and name would be img to student okay and again the border color border style should be single border color should be the same color which we are utilizing back color would be blank and height would be 80 let's change the height that would be 80 and again the weight should be 80 okay so we are considering a passport size photo for that and let's change the picture alignment and other picture proper uh, image property so let's picture alignment should be center and picture size should be stretch uh, the size mode so let's this one and let's uh, change the name for this the hidden uh, text box so the name would be txt 
image path we will be utilizing this text box to store the image uh, the path of that image okay and let's change the visible and the visibility should be false so let's click on the visible false now let's uh, change the properties of this command button so select this and so cmd load image okay and the back color would be white again and the caption would be upload image okay and let's decrease the size i think uh, let's uh, change the properties of text box uh, that is for address so that would be txt address and the border style should be single border color would be the same color and back color would be this one and just make it multi-line so multi-line property that would be true and let's increase the size okay and let's let's add the scroll bar so let's make it vertical let's uh, change the properties of command uh, the command command button 2 and command button 3 so let's select this command button 2 and let's uh, change the name that would be cmd submit okay and the accelerator key should be s back color like the palette and maybe this one submit okay let's select this command button 3 change the name cmd reset okay and back color would be maybe this one an accelerator key should be R and the caption would be reset. Let's move to the right side. Press Ctrl S. Let's run this form to see how it looks like. Okay, so it's looking good. Let's close this form press ctrl s again and now uh, the enter details section is ready let's add uh, one frame and that is for database so let's uh, select this frame from this toolbox okay and draw the frame here okay go to the properties and the border style should be single and the color the same color which we are utilizing and the font the full color would be the same color and the font would be here yeah, that would be 12 and give the caption and that would be database okay press ctrl s so let's quickly add all those uh, controls in this particular section so first of all we need two button over here one is for edit and one is for delete so let's insert two buttons over here this is for edit and again uh, this is for delete and uh, the third control that is required that is a list box so let's select this list box and draw a list box over here okay press ctrl s let's uh, change the properties of each and every controls in the database frame okay so let's uh, select this command button and that is command button one for this particular uh, frame go to the properties window and let's see the name and that would be cmd edit and accelerator key should be e okay and change the caption edit and the height would be uh, 20 and width should be 60 so let's 
60 and let's change the font size uh, that should be 10 okay uh, let's change the back color as well so for edit the back color should be maybe we can pick this one edit let's change the name and caption of command button 2 so that would be uh, cmd delete and let's d as accelerator key and caption delete okay and the back color would be again maybe this one let's select some different color so maybe this one okay and the height should be 20 and the font size should be 10 okay and the width should be 60 okay let's move a little bit up your side okay so edit and delete buttons are ready let's change the properties of list box so select this list box go to properties window and change the name from list box 1 to lst database okay and select the border style that would be single border color the same color okay and the back color would be white so, so everything is done let's run this form and see how it looks like so it's looking good right okay let's close this form again uh, so everything uh, the designing part is done uh, what we need to do we need to uh, set the tab order for each and every control let's quickly uh, add the tab order for each and every control so go to properties window and select this and here tab index one Eleven, twelve, and for this group uh, that would be one zero and one and two it's good so we have successfully set the tab order uh, one thing is missing we need to insert the icon over here so let's uh, insert the image for that icon and click the insert image over here and okay so let's uh, set the uh, height and width for that image so the height and width would be 20 so that's 20 and the width would be again 20 right and let's uh, change the name of this icon so from image 1 to IMG DOB data birth right and the name would be IMG CALE and calendar okay because we are going to utilize this uh, icon to launch the calendar but calendar form right and go to the picture let's add the picture on this image and select the calendar this one calendar or GIF and here the size should be a stretch and border style should be none and the back color should be just drag this icon and place over here okay that's done let's run this form now we can see that uh, this particular icon is perfectly uh, fitted under the text box that is for that date of birth let's close this form 
one thing we are missing we need to protect this uh, data birth so that user will not uh, directly enter any of the date in this particular uh, no, text box user either user will utilize this uh, no, icon or double click on this text box to launch the calendar button so let's go and select the protection yeah here you can see that uh, it's locked that uh, locked would be true okay so uh, now we have done with the form uh, created required controls and set all those properties uh, as you can see on the screen uh, let's import the my calendar custom uh, custom calendar form so that uh, we can utilize that calendar on the click event of date of birth double click on event of date of birth text box as well as this particular icon so just right click on the form and import file and from import file you can see that we are in support file so just click this my calendar.frm click on open now you can see that an additional user form that is my calendar which is available here so it has been created in uh, visual basic application let me show you the code which we have uh, written to develop this form in the calendar basically so it's a very simple uh, let's go to the frm data entry and now let's utilize this my calendar so before uh, proceeding and utilizing the my calendar and writing the code let's insert a module so just go to insert and click on module and uh, let's uh, change the name select this module one and change the name from module one to md data entry okay uh, let's double click on frm calendar and let's write the code on double click event on this particular text box the data birth just double click on that and here you can see that the event is changed so we need to write the code on double click so let's change the event and here you can see that it's a double click and let's uh, delete the this particular line of course which is for change event and now we need to write the code uh, within this sub procedure like the double click events for txt dob so let's start writing the code so first of all we will make the application screen screen updating and that would be false and let's declare a variable to store the date so as date as string and uh, let's write the code to uh, resume the next line if any error will occur so on resume next and let's uh, assign the value on to s date variable s date is equal to my calendar the calendar which we have already imported so i am referring this my calendar dot date picker so date picker is a function which we have which i have already created in this my calendar form you can go and uh, like go and explore all those functionality or the codes which are available in my calendar so i am not going to discuss uh, all those codes here right we are directly utilizing the function which is available in this particular my calendar that is date picker okay date picker and open bracket and me dot txt dob okay simple very simple right and here me dot txt dob is equal to and now we need to assign so value is equal to format and we need to format the, the date which we have already assigned in s date so s date and the format would be uh, dd maybe dd mmm okay and then four time y okay now let's uh, release the on error so on error go go to zero and application dot screen updating is equal to true so this is all about the code of to launch the calendar calendar control and select the date and assign the date to uh, txt dob let's copy this code entire code press ctrl c again go to frm data entry now we need to assign the same code on click event of this 
image control okay so let's double click on that and here you can see that one private sub procedure has been added and the event is click event let's make create some room um, between private sub and end sub and paste the code which we copied from this procedure okay let's align this now it's done press ctrl s go to frm data entry click on run and let's double click on that now you can see that once you click on double click on this particular text box you can uh, like the calendar uh, calendar is showing and you can select end of the date right and even you can select or change the date on this particular on click event of this image and that is icon and let's select the 19th now you can see that it's working so let's close this form press ctrl s okay let's uh, minimize the size of properties window because we are not going to utilize it more because we have already created and set all those properties let's double click on md data entry module and now uh, we need to write the code uh, to in uh, to reset the form and to initialize the window right so let's uh, give the comment code to reset reset and form okay and let's start writing the code so the sub procedure name would be reset underscore form create some room let's declare a variable dim i row as long and let's start with with frm data entry and end with so we are going to reset the frm data entry this this form and that's why we are utilizing with frm data entry right let's write the code within with an end with block so dot txt student name dot value is equal to blank and dot txt student name dot back color would be vv white okay and dot txt father name dot value is equal to blank dot txt father name dot back color is equal to vv white so basically what we are doing we are just uh, resetting all those fields where user can make the entry and assign the default color okay dot txt dob dot value is equal to blank dot txt dob dot back color is equal to vv white okay now data birth done let's reset the value of uh, gender so dot opt female dot value is equal to false and dot opt male opt male dot value is equal to false here we are not going to set the back color of option button because uh, we have not utilized uh, the back color for option button right txt mobile number dot value is equal to blank dot txt mobile dot back color is equal to vv white dot txt email dot value is equal to blank dot txt email dot back color is equal to vv white okay okay so remember we have inserted uh, two hidden row number uh, text box one is for row number one is to uh, store the image so let's uh, txt txt row number dot value is equal to blank we do not need to set the color because this is hidden okay and the next text box that is hidden is txt image dot path dot value is equal to blank let's uh, txt txt address dot value is equal to blank and dot txt 
address dot back color is equal to vv white so uh, let's uh, reset the image control so dot img student dot picture is equal to load load picture and the picture name would be because if we are uh, you no know, resetting so we are not going to assign any of the pictures so the value would be vv null string so here uh, we are utilizing load picture function and to assign the picture okay and dot cmd submit cmd submit dot caption and the caption would be submit okay now the pending uh, control is combo box so first of all let's uh, change the color back color of combo box so cmb course dot back color that would be uh, vv white and now uh, as let's uh, move to the excel worksheet and here you can see that support in support worksheet in the support sheet we have created uh, the course okay and the reason for creation the course is here because we will utilize uh, this particular column as a row source for that combo box and it will work dynamically right so let's move to the visual basic and let's enter a comment over here dynamic range based on support sheet okay so first of all uh, we will create uh, the name for the given range so let's start so let's refer the worksheet name so ssh support dot range and the range is starting from a2 okay and then and it ends to ssh support dot range and here a ampersand rows dot count dot and excel up dot names and the name would be so here we are creating a dynamic name uh, which is starting from a2 to the cell where a data is available right so what it will do it will uh, select the range starting from a2 to a6 or maybe if you add some more cores over here then it will consider all those cores uh, all those cells right and then create a dynamic name and the name would be dynamic and once the name would be created then it will assign the name uh, to row source properties of combo box okay so here we have created a dynamic a name basis the value available in support sheet so let's assign this so dear cmb course dot row source and the row source should be name uh, let's utilize the name here the name which we have already created dynamic okay and let's uh, cmb course dot value and that would be blank okay so we have successfully reset all those uh, input controls let's write the code to assign the table value to list box so let's give the comment over here assigning row source to lst database list box okay so let's move to excel worksheet first go to database and here you can see that uh, we have total 12 columns so we need uh, 12 columns in our list box so let's move to code window and lst uh, lst database dot column count is equal to 12 okay and let's uh, show the header so lst uh, database dot column heads is equal to true 
because in our database we have column header and let's assign the column width so we have considered 12 columns so we need to assign uh, the points the column points uh, the width basically for each and every column so let's lst lst database dot column width is equal to and we need to pass all those column widths in inverted commas so let's uh, first would be 30 comma 70 again comma 70 40 45 and then 70 60 70 and 0 0 0 okay so we do not want to uh, do not want to show the last three columns and that's why i have mentioned 0 okay and let's identify the uh, last row in last non blank row in database worksheet so until find the last non blank row in database sheet okay as we have already declared a variable that is i row let's utilize that variable so i row is equal to ss uh, database dot range and here a ampersand rows dot count dot end and then excel up dot row okay so uh, it will uh, give us the output as the last known blank row let's utilize this row first of all we need to validate uh, whether the i row is greater than one or not because see on row number one uh, we have uh, mentioned the column headers so let's uh, if i row is greater than one then else and if so if i row the value of i row is greater than one then we need to lst database dot row source is equal to and here and database okay and a2 to l i row okay let's copy this code and if there is only one the column header available then we need to make it i2 l2 basically so that's done the code for reset is done go to debug and compile now there is no compiler error for this code let's create room here so let's uh let's add a sub procedure to check whether the images folder is available or not if it's not available then it will create the folder okay and if uh, that image folder is available then it will skip it will not do anything and we will utilize the same folder to keep uh, all those you know selected images uh, we will utilize the image folder as a repository of images okay so it means whenever user will browse any of the students images and select image uh, the code will copy the that image from the actual location and paste it in the image folder and change the name uh, the name would be a uh, student name right and then after that we uh, will utilize the same image path while assigning the image to the image control as well as keeping uh, you know, uh, the image path in database worksheet right so let's start writing the code sub create folder create some room over here let's declare dim s str string folder as a string okay and str folder is equal to this workbook dot path ampersand application dot path separator and then again ampersand 
and the folder name would be images okay and let's check whether this folder is exist at the same location or not so we will utilize directory function here and we will pass here you can see that the path name so str folder and the directory that is vv directory so vv directory okay close the bracket and equal to if that is equal to blank it means that particular folder is not available or the folder is not available at the given location then what we need to do we need to uh, call a function that is called make dir and create the folder uh, that is str folder folder and and if so it's a very simple function we have assigned the folder path over here folder name basically and with the help of directory function we are validating whether uh, this folder is exist or not if the folder would not be available at the given location then it will uh, it will be blank okay so if folder is missing or folder is not available then it will be blank in that case we need to create the folder that is uh, str folder so with the help of make directory mkdir we we are creating the directory the folder and if uh, that folder is available then it will it will not do anything it will skip the the code okay so this is done for create folder now let's uh, write a function uh, to browse the image and select the image okay so let's uh, function and the function name would be get image path okay as a string let's move okay First of all, let's initialize the get image path with blank. So get image path is equal to blank because the function is a string type, right? And let's with application dot file dialog and the file dialog would be MSO file picker. Okay. And with and let's allow multi select we do not need to allow the multi select that would be false and the filters we need to uh, add filters so let's see. filters dot add and the that would be images comma and let's uh, give the extension over here so start dot gif okay semicolon star dot jpg semicolon and again star dot jpeg okay let's if dot show is equal to is not equal to zero it means user has selected some of the image uh, image basically then and if and we need to here uh, get image Path and the path would be selected items one. So what it will do? Uh, suppose uh, user is selecting any of the image, it will assign the path of selected image uh, to get image path. That is the function name. Okay, so that's done. It's very simple. Uh, let's uh, delete the extra blank lines. So now uh, we have a function uh, and with the help of that function we can get the path of selected image so let's uh, write a sub procedure to create the copy of selected image and paste it uh, to the folder then assign the the path of that image to image controls as well as text box okay so let's write sub load image create some room over here okay then let's start writing the code so first of all we will declare a variable uh, that is img source path as a string so let's then img source path as a string 
let's put a comment over here so that whenever you refer this code uh, you can identify the purpose of and that particular variable okay so to store the path of selected image okay let's declare one more variable that is dim img destination a string and here to store the destination path of path to create the copy of selected image okay now let's uh, assign the source path so img so your source path and the source path would be uh, because we have already declared a function and that is let me go there so this this particular function we are going to utilize so let's copy this and here let's use the trim function and okay so what it will do it will uh, get the image the path of a selected emails and assign it to img source path okay let's uh, call create folder function so if the folder will not available at the given location and then it will create otherwise it will skip okay and the destination path would be so img destination and that would be this workbook dot path okay and m percent application dot path separator and then m percent and here uh, we are going to utilize the student's name for that image so the file name would be frm data entry dot txt student's name okay and then m percent let's break the line and we need to give the extension over here so extension uh, so after name we need to insert a dot okay then m percent and we need to split and we need to retrieve the extension from uh, the selected image okay so img as source path and that is the, this one we have already source path comma delimiter that would be dot okay yeah. and then again split and then img source source path okay so i think we have forward to add one open bracket over here now it's done you can see that it's uh, working there is no error basically uh, let's debug this compile no this is no compiler error okay now let's copy this this particular img source path from this to img destination okay so to copy that uh, image we need to utilize file copy function so let's file copy function and img source path comma img destination okay okay let's uh, assign the image to uh, a student's image the image control which we are utilizing on form so first of all let's uh, set the properties of image that would be stage mode so frm data entry dot I am the student 
dot picture size the picture uh, size mode would be frm stretch the frm picture size mode stretch right and let's load the picture frm data entry dot img student dot picture is equal to and the function would be load picture img destination okay and let's assign the destination on the path of that image to the hidden text box which we are utilizing for image so let's frm entry dot txt image path dot value is equal to destination okay so that's done let's delete the unwanted space let's align this code a bit more press ctrl s go to debug compile so now you can see that uh, we have created a sub procedure to load the image now let's write the code to validate the email id so okay so let's function valid email email as string as the type would be boolean okay let's move let's declare a variable for regular expression so dim regular expression as object and set org x is equal to we need to create an object so we will utilize a function create object and the object wouldn't be a uh, let's double quote and the name would be vv vv script dot reg exp close bracket let's start with ore G E X and with okay let's write the code here let's uh, set the pattern pattern and the pattern would be we have already mentioned the pattern in our support file so let's open the support file and the regular expression here and copy this pattern from here and just visit to code window and paste okay let's uh, valid email is equal to dot test test email it should be test not text basically test okay uh, let's uh, set the ex is equal to nothing let's format let's go to debug compile now you can see that there is no error okay so let's uh, write a function to validate all those entries made by user so let's quickly add a function over here so the name would be function valid entry as boolean and create room okay let's start with valid entry is equal to true and let's with frm data entry and with okay and let's uh, write the code uh, to assign the default color for each and every uh, to each and every control basically so so dot txt student dot back color is equal to vv white dot txt father name dot back color is equal to vv white dot txt dob dot back color is equal to vv 
white dot txt mobile dot back color is equal to white txt email dot back color is equal to vv white dot txt address dot back color is equal to vv white dot cmb course dot back color is equal to white okay so now we have done with the default color okay so let's uh, write the code to validate each and every entry so first of all validating a student's name okay if let's utilize stream function dot txt txt students name dot value is equal to blank then and if let's write the code over here so the message box should be please enter a student's name okay plus vv information a student's name okay and txt a student's name dot back color is equal to vv red now we are highlighting with red color txt is student's name dot set focus okay and valid entry it will be false exit function so this is for a student name let's copy this code and replicate this code for father's name and here txt father name please enter father's name father's and let's copy this here that will be father okay this is done for fathers let's start writing the code to validate data worth bob if trim dot txt dob dot value is equal to blank then and if and the message box would be dob is blank please select dob from CLA calendars control okay vv ok only plus vv information dob data birth dot txt dob dot back color would be vv red because there is error on data birth field and we need to set focus so txt dob dob dot set focus and then valid entry is equal to false exit function and let's uh, write the code to validate gender so here validating validating gender okay so if dot opt female dot value is equal to false and dot opt male dot value is equal to false then and if if nothing has been selected by user then uh, we need to mess show a message box please select gender okay vv okay only plus vv information 
gender okay and valid entry is equal to false exit function okay uh, let's uh, write the code to validate the course details so let's copy this uh, maybe i think let's copy the code which is for father's name and replicate this for course validating course and here let's change the name dot t uh, c m b course dot value if the value is blank it means user has not selected any of the course so we need to pop up a message uh, please select course name drop down and here course name okay and let's change the txt further to cmb course again cmb course let's write the code to validate the mobile number so validating mobile number so to validate the mobile number we need to check a three different condition and pop up a message if like user has not entered any value it means it's totally blank or if the length of uh, mobile number is less than 10 or if user has entered some you know, uh, string value rather than numeric value so in that case we need to show a message to user that you have entered incorrect mobile number okay so let's start writing the code if dream dot txt mobile dot value is equal to blank or length of dot txt mobile number dot value is less than 10 or not uh, is numeric and dot txt mobile number dot value okay then and if let's copy this code this code and replicate here please enter enter a valid mobile number okay and here mobile number txt mobile backer would be red and set focus it's done for mobile number let's write the code to validate email id so let's put a comment over here validating email and remember we have already uh, created a function to validate email in email id so we will call that function here so if valid email valid email is the function name and we need to pass a parameter that is uh, email id so dot txt email dot value is equal to true is equal to false basically if if the pattern is will not match uh, then we need to pop up a message over here and then and if and here we need to copy this code and replicate it for email id as well and just copy this txt email replace okay please enter a valid email id okay and the caption would be email id right so email id validation is done let's uh, validate the address so just copy the code uh, maybe the code is for father's name replicate and this for address okay and change the comments so address and here 
dot txt address dot value is equal to blank and then please enter address and here address replace the father's name with address txt address so validating address is done one last validation is pending that is image control so let's validating image okay let's uh, if dot img student dot picture is nothing then and if so here we need to pass a message stating that uh, you have not selected any image so let's message box please upload the passport size photo okay okay only plus information comma picture so valid entry is equal to false exit function so that's uh, done validation code is ready let's remove unwanted space so now you can see that uh, the valid entry function is ready let's move to debug click on compile now you can see that there is no compiler error press ctrl s to save the changes okay so let's uh, write a sub procedure to submit the entire data to the database worksheet okay so let's start writing the code so the name would be uh, start with sub and submit underscore data create room over here let's move okay so let's declare dim i row as long we will utilize this to identify a non blank row the last non blank row okay so we have already created a, a text box to keep the row number okay so if that row number uh, the value of that text box is blank then we will utilize the i row variable okay otherwise uh, we will utilize that, that text box okay so let's first of all check if frm data entry dot txt row number dot value is equal to blank then it means we need to identify the row number so i row is equal to ss database dot range a m percent rows dot count dot end excel up dot row plus one okay so plus one means uh, we are just moving uh, first of all we are identifying uh, the last known blank row and then we are adding one one value to that uh, that particular row to identify the next blank row okay suppose if the txt row number dot value is not blank it means some values are over there so in that case uh, we need to consider i row is equal to frm data entry dot txt row number dot value so we will utilize that row number to update the records okay and if so let's start uh, writing the code to transfer the data from frm data entry to uh, ss database worksheet right so with ss data base dot range and the range would be a and the row would be i row and with let's delete this space and let's write the code 
within uh, with an end with block so uh, here we will uh, utilize the offset function to move uh, a particular column basically so let's uh, offset and here we need to keep on the cursor at the same i mean uh, a column okay dot value value is equal to and the the first column is our serial number so let's utilize a uh, uh, row function here and because see uh, we have utilized the first row as a header so we need to minus one to identify the exact serial number okay and this serial number is totally dynamic it means whenever we add any of the line of the uh, any records from the SH data sheet, database then row number the serial number will be automatically adjusted okay so as we have already seen that we have total 12 columns available in our database worksheet so repl let's replicate this line of code the offset function 12 times so let's first of all make this this one and Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Now we need to move uh, the column basically. So here, this is the first column. So this is second. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven means we are on eighth column. Eight, nine, ten, and eleven is the last column. Okay. And let's start writing the code. So, second column would be frm data entry dot txt student name dot value and he this is father's name frm data dot txt father name dot value and this is date of birth to frm data entry dot txt dob dot value and this is for gender so let's utilize if function iif frm data entry dot opt female dot value is equal to true then female else male. okay okay so uh, let's add the code for course so frm data entry dot cmb scores dot value and let's write the code for mobile number so let's select this replicate the code here and change txt mobile okay then email id so let's txt email okay now address so let's let's replicate the same code for address as well and here txt address and this would be uh, for image so let's replicate the same code and change txt image path okay and here we need to store the username application dot username okay and the date we need to enter the date in last column so let's use format function and now dd mmm yyy hh mm ss 
that's done so we have done with the data transfer code let's uh, call the reset function so once data will get transfer form uh, the data entry form then data entry form would be blank okay so call reset underscore form okay now we need to keep the application screen updating true screen updating is equal to true and then we need to show a message data submitted successfully that's done so we have done with uh, the data transfer now let's uh, move to the form frm data entry and now we need to write the code to identify the selection basically which uh, record has been selected by user so let's uh, move to the module and here we need to write a function and here we need to write a function uh, to identify the selected row number in the ls3 database list box right so let's start function and the function name would be selected list and the data type for this function would be long basically right so let's as long and create some room so that we can write the code let's press enter okay that's done okay let's write the code so let's declare a variable so first of all deem i as long and selected selected underscore list that is long data type that would be zero so first of all we are initializing on this particular variable and the function variable basically and the data type is long so we are initializing selected underscore list with zero right and if frm data entry dot and list database dot list count is less than one then exit sub not exit sub basically this is a function so that would be exit function so here basically uh, if user has not selected any of the recording list box then it will not do anything it will directly come out from this this function right let's start writing uh, the for loop so for i is equal to 0 to frm data entry dot list database dot list count minus 1 so we will loop until the list count the last list item right and here next i Let's put a condition over here if frm data entry dot list list database dot selected i is equal to true then and if so suppose user has selected any of the records then this particular line of code will identify that uh, that particular uh, row number in that list box right and it will assign the number to selected list so let's write the code selected underscore list list is equal to i plus one so once uh, we will identify uh, the selected row then we need to come out from this loop so the code is exit for let's uh, delete and delete the unwanted space so we have done with the code which uh, we will utilize to identify the selected row in list box let's write a sub procedure to show the form so sub show underscore form and here we need to write the code frm data entry dot show okay that's done 
so uh, we have done with all the procedures and functions required for this particular tool uh, let's move to the data entry form and call all those procedures on different events like maybe initialize and double click or click events so let's double click on frm data entry and first of all we need to call the reset function on form initialization so just double click on the form and here you can see that uh, it's showing click event so we need to change the click event to initialize so let's go to the event drop down and select the initialize and delete the previous code okay and let's create some room so let's call the reset underscore form so what it will do whenever uh, this form will get initialized entire uh, all those you know the controls which are available uh, will have blank value and the default color right let's uh, move to the frm data entry form and double click on uh, let's double click on upload image button here and let's write the code to load uh, the image basically the browse features which we have already written the code so uh, before uploading the image we need to identify whether a uh, user has input the student's name or not so if a student name is blank then we can't upload the image because see, if we are utilizing the student's name as a image name okay so in that case we need to validate uh, whether user has input a student's name or not so let's do this so if me dot txt students name dot value is equal to blank then msg box please enter a student's name first okay we be okay only plus critical and this and the caption would be the title basically error if everything is okay it means user has entered uh, the student's name then we need to write the code basically here so here we just need to uh, call the procedure that is load image so call that's done okay uh, let's uh, move to the form we have done with the this button let's assign the code on submit so let's double click on submit button and here we need to write the code okay so first of all we need to uh, get the confirmation from user whether user wants to transfer the data from form to database so to do that first of all let's declare a variable dim i as vv message box result i is equal to message box and we need to do you want to maybe submit the data okay vv yes no plus vv question submit data okay if i is equal to vv no then exit sub so if user will select no then uh, it will not do anything okay and suppose user has selected yes then further we need to validate whether the input is correct or not and for that we have already created a function and the function is uh, no, valid entry so let's utilize that valid entry is equal to true and then and here and if okay and let's call the procedure submit underscore data that's done so we have done with the submit code now let's uh, move to the frm data entry and let's assign the code on reset click event of reset button so let's double click on reset and create some room okay let's copy the code uh, which are available on submit underscore click and just replicate the same code over here and we just need to uh, 
change the message box data basically so do you want to reset the form and the title would be reset form and if user will select yes uh, then we need to call a reset underscore form that's it so it's done okay so we have uh, assigned the code for submit and reset now the pending code is for edit and delete so let's uh, double click on edit button and here we need to assign the code to edit the selected records basically the selected records in list box so let's start writing the code so first of all uh, we will validate whether user has selected any records or not and for that we have already created a function that is selected underscore list so let's utilize that function okay so let's uh, start writing code if selected underscore list is equal to zero zero then okay then we need to uh, pop up a message msg box no row is selected okay vv okay only plus vv information and here error edit exit sub and if okay so if user has not selected any any of the record in list list box basically then it will prompt a message that no row is selected and it will come out from this uh, this procedure that is cmd edit if a user has selected a record then we need to proceed with the code and the code would be so first of all let's uh, declare a variable dim s gender as a string and let's assign the value uh, the row number basically so we will utilize the txt row number that is hidden so me dot txt row number dot value is equal to me dot lst database dot list and uh, me dot lst database dot list index plus one so basically uh, here uh, we are assigning the selected row to txt row number right and let's so let's assign all those value to the controls available in the first section so let's assign okay so frm data entry dot txt students name dot value is equal to me dot lst database dot list and again me dot lst database dot list index comma one so this is for student name let's uh, create some room over here and replicate this line of code for father's name so this is for father's name txt father dot txt father name okay and the column should be two and replicate this line of code to date of birth dot txt dob and column would be three and let's format dd mmm y y y so this is for father name let's assign the value of gender so we have already declared a variable that is s gender and me dot list database dot list me dot list database dot list index and four okay and if s 
gender is equal to female then frm data entry dot opt female dot value is equal to true else frm data entry dot opt male dot value is equal to true and if so this is for gender okay so let's write the code for a course okay so frm data entry dot cmb course dot value is equal to let's copy this line of code this one replicate here and the column number would be five let's copy this line of code and replicate this for mobile number txt mobile and that would be the column would be six let's copy this line of code and replicate this for email id T txt email and here the value the column would be seven and let's uh and write the code for address so txt address and the column number would be eight now we need to write the code uh, to load the picture so frm data entry dot img student dot picture and the picture would be the function load load picture and here close bracket and let's copy this line of code this one and pass a parameter to load picture and change the column to nine okay and let's uh, replicate this line of code for t txt image path so here txt image path and the column number would be nine okay let's uh, change the caption of frm data entry dot cmd submit dot cap caption and the caption would be update okay now everything has been successfully assigned to the respective controls so let's pop up a message and the message would be please make the required changes changes and click on update to to save to edit the data uh, code is ready let's go to debug and click on compile now you can see that there is no compiler error press ctrl s to save this file now we need to write the code uh, to delete the selected records so let's move to frm data entry and double click on delete here and we need to write the code here okay so here we again uh, need to identify whether any row is selected or not right so let's copy the code here in under cmd edit and just copy this and here and change the title delete okay so no row is selected and exit sub okay now uh, if user has selected a row then we need uh, to take a confirmation from user whether user wants to delete or not right so first of all let's declare a variable die i as vv message box result i is equal to message box do you want to delete the selected record vv yes no plus vv question and the title would be confirmation delete basically okay 
and if i is equal to vv no then exit sub if user will select yes then in that case we need to delete the records so to delete the records uh, we need to identify the row number so let's declare a variable dim a row as long okay and the uh, the value of row number would be row me dot list bar list database basically dot uh, list and again me dot list lst database dot list index comma zero plus one okay so it will provide the correct row number and assign it to row variable okay now uh, we need to delete the records so let's write the code this book dot sheets database okay dot rows row dot delete now once uh, the record will be get deleted then we need to call the function reset and then we need to pass a message to user that selected record has been deleted successfully we will ok only plus we will information delete so the code for delete is done so now we have successfully assigned the code on click events a button and form initialization let's move to excel window and assign the macro on the launch of form button so that whenever user will click on a launch a form button then form will appear on screen so let's go to move right click on that launch form and assign macro and here show form and click on ok so everything is done let's uh, move to visual basic and uh, debug now we have, you can see that there is no error so let's move to excel click on launch okay uh, now you can see that uh, this form is ready let's start submitting data so let's delip rk and let's select the date of birth so maybe 9th male 10 plus 2 or maybe master degree mobile number 1234567890 email id info at the rate labs.org upload image and let's uh, select any of the images basically so let's uh, select this this image click on ok now you can see that this image is available here now write the code address so new Delhi and click on submit click on yes hope everything is perfect let's click on close go to database now you can see that everything is available here and email id address the path of uh, the folder come to the visual basic run this form and let's edit now you can see that whenever you click on edit it has started showing the details in relevant you know input controls basically okay let's change the image maybe maybe this one okay let's update click on yes now it has been updated let's select this so it's working I reset this form yes 
let's uh, add one more record shivans dk maybe this one mail course applied maybe 10th 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 zero and info at the rate labs.org upload emails select any of the emails maybe i'm picking the same emails here and again new delhi click on submit yes now we have two records right you can make the like adjust the size of form accordingly right and you can see that there are two records available here let's delete the first record that is dilip selected i have already selected click on delete yes okay so here you can see that uh, there is only one record that is called for sivans and here the serial number has been auto adjusted earlier uh, the serial number for sivans was 2 but now it's it is showing 1 okay let's click on edit click on okay so this is all about uh, you know creating a student registration form in excel and visual basic you can utilize all this code to generate is a complex form as per your requirement hope this uh, video will be useful for you thank you for watching please like share subscribe and comment have a great day bye bye